Sid K. Welcome to the back pocket. How are you doing? What's going on? Good. How are you guys? Thanks for having me. We're all quarantined up and we're having a blast. Yeah. Um. This is exciting times. We. So we're recording. What this is. Uh. What's today? The twenty fifth of March. Yeah. I think. I think it's like technically like day ten, maybe. Yeah. Day ten of quarantine. Uh. Hey. Look around. Got a bunch of rule breakers. Oh God. Here. Six feet apart, but nonetheless, breaking rules. No, we're essential. Safe. We they we heard the news today from uh, Governor Waltz. He said news media is essential work. Are you serious? That was that came on the bullet. That point. actually is true. Mm-hmm. I yeah. just saw something on that. I read wow. it just a second ago. So we're not rule rule breakers then. No, technically no. <laughs> I mean, this is news. It's news. Our <laughs> LLC is filed under a media company. Yeah, we are. So we're all it. It all checks out for us. That's exciting. Mm-hmm. I love that. I wonder if there's like a a minimum level of like we have to provide one fact or something per hour of rec- recorded content oh right. or like break you. news right we have to break we have uh, to break one bit of news oh well, okay well, let's break the news on that bachelor guy what oh, are we allowed uh, to say anything can we uh no you Ooh, tell us You're i don't know told us i don't probably think not. i'm not sp- i don't yeah, think i'm supposed not. to oh my gosh i'm scared uh i don't want to get in trouble oh my gosh that's uh, not my news we'll just break this news then <laughs> uh the guy there's a guy we work out with at alter who's gonna be on the bachelorette that's pretty much all we can say. And that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Do you think he'd be worth getting on the podcast? Have you ever talked to him before or anything? I've talked to him. I consider him like a an in passing friend. So mm. can can we ask him to come on? I don't know. Does he know who he is? Is he listening? Oh. <laughs> he needs to self identify. <laughs> <laughs> First one yeah, when he figures out who he is, then I think he'll be able to come on. We'll have a chance. Then we'll yeah, talk. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I also I I think that is my favorite sweater of yours by the way thank you so much thank you i got it at uh i'll plug them the jungle what's it what's it called jungle something jungle it's in minneapolis no the jungle book yeah no it's called like jungle gear or something like that it's right in by the the u campus oh sweet i don't know but they've got some sick stuff it's it's like a brick and mortar type. yeah well no it's like they do their own thing they like collect all these cool like actual authentic gear Mm -hmm. it's Mm. it's legit if you got time, go over there. It's jungle something. It. I wish I could plug them better. <laughs> okay, well They've we should uh, we should you know we should do our our marketing interns our listeners a little bit of a, a service here. Um, you know we're all sitting here today. Uh, we just found out the the big news that we're all supposed to be staying at home and whatnot. And you know we st- thank God we recorded we record out of our house. I think the man hours we put in uh, at the beginning of this year to build out the studio big time in our house is, has paid off dividends. Correct. Um, but I like to, you know, welcome S- Sid here. She's a good friend. Uh, we've been working out at Alter with you for like how long now? A year probably. Over a year probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. The I Alter would say crew. So. Hey, Army. Army uh, goes uh, outside of Alter. <laughs> yes, Alter <laughs> you Army. You gotta use the lingo. <laughs> Boom. You gotta use the yeah, lingo. No, like the Army. The Army travels well. <laughs> put it that way. <laughs> we go far and wide. We 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 hike across many states mm-hmm. if we have to, and we go to war. Right. I love that. But we stay in formation. Yeah. Always. We do, yes. and, and six feet apart at this point. Six this feet point. apart. Correct. And we hold down the fort. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> no. Yeah. Welcome. I'm I'm stoked Thanks, to have guys. you here. This is, this is like kind of a long time coming. I feel like. I know. I know. We've kind of talked about it for a while. I know. Yeah. And cause we got a lot of other things in in store, which I w- really it's not really worth talking about yet because no, we, it's not built out yet. But I know you have a knack for you know being on air. You know, wanting mm-hmm. to because you were a journalist major in college. Yeah. Is that right? I went to ASU for a year. Some people don't know that. A lot of people don't know that. I try not to tell people that because I think it changes their perception of, of me. So this I was think, your freshman year? Yeah, no, junior. Oh. That's, yeah. So I kind of like. You did a flip flop. I did a flip flop. I went to the U two years and then I was like, you know what? I've always wanted to move somewhere. I've always wanted to do something different. Because you're well, from the area. Yeah. From okay. here, from Victoria, technically. Chan happen in area, if you know where that is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but I decided to do a little flip, do a little, um, I wanted to do broadcast journalism and mm. sports journalism to be specific. Got there, got into it. I absolutely hated it. I hated it because it was so structured and what you had to talk about, what you had to say. You're following a prompt. You're you're looking exactly at one spot. You your opinion wasn't really wanted. And some people did your own work for you. And it was just it was weird, weird concept and little secret tidbit that they even said to me before I like got into like getting my degree there and like moving forward with it. They're like, You're not blonde. Like, sorry. Oh, damn. Yeah. No way. I swear to God. I was like, Oh, okay. Okay, they, I'll just they go were jump like out the You're window. not going to do well because yeah. you're not blonde. Because I'm not blonde, because history repeats itself. Because if you, I mean, if you look in the news, a lot of a lot of the successful reporters are blonde, and I mean, it's it's horrible, but it's true. 
yeah. and especially in sports reporting in specific. Right. Like I'm trying to think brutal. of a not blonde sports reporter. I think there's like one. Allie LaForce. Yeah, I was going to say. She's it. from the area. No, who's the one? Oh, no. She, the one from the area is blonde. Jenny yeah, Taft. she's blonde. Jenny Taft. Yeah. Jenny yeah. Taft. But, uh, or and uh, Carly Zucker. Right. Oh, true. Mm-hmm. I always forget yeah. that she does it too. But anyway, so I pieced out ASU. I said, see ya. And then I came back to so the So you were U there for a semester or a whole year? <laughs> Technically, I was in Arizona for a whole year, but okay. I stayed only a semester in school. Because mm. I was like, I'm not going to waste any time. I'm going to get back on the online U and like start doing something else. Because once you figure out what you don't want to do, you get closer to what you do want to do. Do I know what I want to do right now? No, but I'm getting closer. I can feel it. <laughs> but I okay. had to switch it up. I had like to get that. back. So what was the first two years? Like you were at the U then, freshman and sophomore year? Yep. Played lacrosse at the U. Um, oh, no We way. did really well our freshman year. But yeah. another kind of brutal thing is they were supposed to go D1 too. There's still like D1 club technically. So I played. Okay. I mean, it's same like rigorousness, but they don't pay you to like do anything. Like they don't pay for your gear. You, you've got to buy everything. Got to buy right. the jerseys. It's like, but it was fun. I love lacrosse. Like I miss it so much now being graduated and whatever, but that was what I basically did my entire time the first two years. And then I was like, you know what? No, I need to switch it up. I get really antsy and a little bit stir crazy doing the same thing over and over again. Kind of a good habit, kind of a bad habit, but I was like, I'm out of here. See ya. Yeah. Were you playing lacrosse and other sports in high school? Yeah. I played hockey and lacrosse in high school. Um, I kick so much ass. I know. (laughs) I love that. I think that's why I like alter. Because it's just like the workouts are so rigorous. Like, I feel like mm-hmm. I'm plugging them right now, but I just actually genuinely just like to go there. Um, They're a sponsor of the podcast. So they keep are. Them. Oh, yeah. pity. Yeah. I love you. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I, I played hockey and lacrosse. It was intense. I was for a while. I was a little manly. I'm going to be honest. Um, probably still am. But I think it's a good thing. Makes you tough. I feel Man, like it oh, does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. No, people make they would always make fun of how manly I was. <laughs> so I'm not kidding you. In just high like school. Aggressive or what? I think I was a little aggressive, but. Um, in lacrosse, I got in trouble a little bit. You were bit, throwing so. bows. Yeah, I was a little bit. Yeah, but bit. this is, I mean. I know. Women's lacrosse. There's I know. not a lot of contact. Well. Um, so. What's up with, what are your thoughts on how you guys didn't have helmets? They only gave you the goggles. Okay, so Did at that first. that piss you off? Good question. Well, at first, I mean, it's like, you think it's the norm. Like, everybody else isn't wearing them. Or girls, like, the girls' different sport. But then you get irritated when you're in the sport. And you keep getting called because you're pushing people over, you know, giving mm. a little bit more of an elbow than you probably should. Right. So, um, but I didn't care until I got hit in the face like 10 times, like Ooh. balls, f- like fling off of like the poles on the actual, um, what, like what's the go- goal post, I guess, but yeah, like around yeah. it, if the ball hits it just right and it's rubber, it bounces right back and I'll just whack you in the face. Oh yeah. My yeah. God. Your own shot. You're like, nice. Thanks for that. Sid. God. Right. And that's going to hurt. That's yeah. going to leave a mark. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's, that's never great. I played, I played, uh, High school across. I was like, oh, yeah, I kind of wish I played in college to, to a certain degree. I know. Not that I regret anything about playing football, but God, there's just something about like the lacrosse culture that I love. It's Running amazing. Around. But no, it's I got in trouble a lot though. Like, yeah. The, in my senior year in specific, I think I was getting a little bit feisty. Um, and apparently, like the association, or I think that's what it would be called, had a little meeting with the refs saying that. Uh, we've got a little bit of an aggressive player in Chan Hassan. <laughs> we got a ball in the China yeah, shop. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they straight up flagged me. And like I would get, they'd bring like an extra ref to the games. No like, way. Watch. No yes, way. I swear. This is like, and this is something no one would know about me because I think I'd, I would, hopefully I don't come off very aggressive. But I don't know if sports, you're overly publicizing this either. I know. Yeah, no, I'm not going in too into detail, but I did a few risque things, I think, and uh, got Any me in trouble. Any suspensions? Yes, I did get suspended. Yeah, Whoa, shit, I got dude. pulled. I got stripped of my titles, and yeah, I got I couldn't play in the last game. So, what? oh, that's bullshit. Yeah, but then okay, did here's you, all right. Let me ask you this though. Okay, did you deserve it? Good question again. I think in moderation, I did. I think I had right. done a few <laughs> things that I deserved it for. I'm gonna be honest, but at, to that extent, come on, you can't do that. And girls would like play with it they'd pretend like i'd hit them in the head like they'd come right. really close to my Lots stick of flops. a lot of flops tons of flops mm-hmm. so then after that i was like okay seriously and then i did mouth mouth off just a little bit yeah right just a uh, little bit and then talk trash yeah no. same just thing almost little. happened to me with, uh, at st thomas no yeah. way yeah, oh, yeah. I got, wait no way i didn't yeah, know I got, that i got kicked out of a football game for lowering my head and targeting and you can't do that in today's day and age and they said number 36 has been ejected from the game and this no. was in the second half of uh, the second to last game. 
and you're technically supposed to be suspended for a full game so i would have been suspended right. for the first half of the next game oh, no. and it was senior day so i would have like missed like the walking out and everything oh no uh but they appealed it and uh it got overturned so i ended up only having to g- i only got kicked out of one half of a football game and uh but it's my claim to fame. Like, I'm proud of getting kicked <laughs> out of a game. <laughs> That's my claim to fame. Yeah. I love that. That kicks a lot of ass, dude. Still God, for you. Mm-hmm. Good yeah. for you. I, I, like, for me, I feel like I'm peaking athletically now. <laughs> I really do. Like, I, I think I'm peaking athletically now. I love that. Straight up. Like, when we do box jumps at Alter, I'm like, I wasn't able to do this high of a box jump before. Like, I, my verticals rose. And, and I, what I'm realizing now is I, I just weighed too much. I just like had too much beef. You're a on unit. Me. He was a unit. You were a straight up unit. Wait, yeah, you gotta see <laughs> this photo of me, uh, of when I was in college. I think it was my junior year. Mm-hmm. As a linebacker, I was like 215 pounds. I'm like 180 something now. Holy. Yeah, there was a there was a, there was a time where literally I had the thickest neck of all time. They actually <laughs> call me Necklin. Put neck here. Uh, it's the most insane thing of all time. Andrew seen it a couple yeah. times, dude. Thick with two C's. Two oh, C's. man. Two C's. I love that. It's unreal. God. But, uh, dude, this freaking Rona stuff is crazy. What have you been doing to, like, stay busy and stay sane? Are you still going? You're not going into work anymore, are you? No, but I work every day, all day. I mean, I'm in healthcare right now because I kind of switched my route here right. recently. I told you a little bit about that. but um, And we're, like, peaking in, like, need, basically. Like, we're rolling out telemedicine right now for... Mm the nation so not super riveting but actually like helping people which is if i mean if we can do anything right now it's like if you can help people then then do it but like i'm helping them from afar so it's like i don't have to get their rona you know what i mean Mm -hmm. but i can still help with the rona (laughs) and telemedicine was like it was gonna happen like that like yeah it was inevitable to a certain degree yeah and like that's maybe one of the pros to this whole situation is like those things are starting to get escalated quicker and people are starting to like fall into suit of like, all right, we need to figure out telemedicine to help people quicker and faster. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what do you think about like working from home too? Do you like going into the office or do you see like a difference in productivity? I mean, th- I thought, okay, so I just thought about this cause I listened to a podcast about people not knowing how to work from home. And mm. I thought that concept was a little weird. Mm-hmm. I'm like, how do you not know how to work from home? Granted, you know, like kids aside and all those distractions aside, but it's like, I like working from home. I can grab a snack whenever I want to go. No one's judging me. If I have another snack or two snacks or more, you don't even you know have what to mean? wear pants if you. If no, you don't, want you don't to. have to because it's all like torso and above. Zoom meetings? You're kidding me. Right. Like <laughs> even like going on surprise. a walk. Surprise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> su- surprise. I'm pantless. Uh, <laughs> Just throw even that like in going there. on a walk and stuff like that, like things that you should not feel guilty about. Yeah it's so much more just simple and you like have a sense of bliss when you're at home and having your own schedule. Yeah. That's interesting that like people have a, like a belief that they don't know how to work at home. Yeah. Like get a hold of yourself. Do you not know how to like simply be? I know. (laughs) I know. Well, okay. You're also the one that like, who was loosely touched on the fact that you've got like, felt like you're going insane because Mm. you do work from home all the time. All right. Hold me accountable. Yeah. 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 So what have you done, Andrew, to, to (laughs) mitigate like the feeling of just, working from home because right now let's be real the coronavirus is like the biggest ad for you because all the other roommates are home or or, or, are also working from home so it just feels like a big we work now right so i've been working from home since august and so i've like finally figured out a routine but still if i didn't have my roommates here i go insane like every three or four hours oh yeah i'm just by myself all day in my own thoughts you still have your zoom meetings which are like your escape route um but still like i'm not I'm not the best at working from home. So I talk a big game and I feel like I can flourish now because people are trying to figure it out while I have it kind of figured out. Mm -hmm. But uh, what do I do to hold myself accountable? It's alter. I'm going to keep plugging it. Like when I get up at five and get to the 530 workout, my day is set. Like I know I'm going to have a productive day because I I got up and started doing shit. Right. No, that's smart. Yeah. I I really do like that. But have you, I mean, have you, have you, you're besides working from home, have you had to shift your day to day at all or is it like. Have you had any, like, standout benefits from Corona so far? I feel like I finally have time to do the things that, like, on my quote-unquote daily to-do list that I've mm-hmm. always been like, Sid, make these a priority. Like, do them every day. They're not that hard. They're, they're, I'll, you know, I'll yeah, run through them. Yeah, what are some of those I things? I can throw you a few. Um, it sounds dumb, but drinking water all day, like, holding yourself accountable and keeping track of it, it's like, it's a crazy, like, simple thing, but it's actually hard. Like, I can't get myself to keep drinking water throughout the day. And I'm like, it's so simple. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to meditate more, Mm. like five to ten minutes even. Like, just do it. Like, get 
get to meditating like find some like groundage in your head you know what I mean like I feel like my head's always moving so I struggle with like doing the simple things to keep myself in like in check in line but um I feel like I finally had time to like write them down check them off the list um I mean like I do alter still but it's like on the on the tv virtually you know what I mean and I'm Mm -hmm. like on the ground on the carpet like doing my like sit-ups way down low below the camera (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I mean, he's like, hey, good. Hi, Sid. Or there you were. I thought you were. No, but I mean, I'm just doing my normal routine, but from, from my house. It's yeah. not that ex- it's not super exciting, but no. I kind of like the alone time. Mm-hmm. I'm not used to it. I'm right. not, I've never been a person to like alone time ever. Yeah. I'm not like an isolated person. Like people consider me to have too many plans. Declan would always make fun of me because it would take me like three weeks to get text you back. <laughs> yeah. Holy cow. I've never met someone more difficult to get a hold of. I thought I was hard to get a hold of. I, I know I, it's a bad habit. I'm trying to fix it, trying to work on it, but I, I get excited to talk to people and like meet up with people, even if I haven't seen them in a year or two years. So my, my planner has gone from being like the craziest thing ever. How am I going to do this in one day to like, Oh dang, I have to like, just hang with myself. Yeah. That's yeah. a good point. I but think, it's good. I think like the Corona is kind of like getting rid of some of the bullshit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it totally is though. That's the thing. Yeah. And it's making us like triple down or not triple down, but just give us more time to, to fill. And mm-hmm. rather than just like being bored, a lot of, a lot like you or like mm-hmm. me or anybody's like kind of looking at, okay, well, what can I do to benefit myself now? You know, I got this extra chunk of hours or time. Might as well spend it towards something that's, you know, somewhat beneficial like meditation. Um, and it's, it's never anything like the glamorous, like you don't need to fill that time with something like over extreme, writing a book or something like super, like you can, if you want to, and it can, yeah. you can put yourself in intimidating situations with your free time, mm-hmm. or you can just do the little things, drinking your water. Like you say, it's super simple and you say it's super hard because it is right. Like no one is very great. No one is great at drinking their water 24 seven and making sure they're fully hydrated. I can't tell you if I know anyone that is the best at that. Right. Yeah. So we've also been asking everybody this. What's your prediction? Mm. Or how, oh. how far, how long do you think this is going to go on for? Well, what, we just got the in shelter in place for what, through May 1, right? Uh, mm. May 10. May 10. And then we're uh, no restaurants, no bars. They're closed until May 1. Or no, sorry. April 10 is stay at home. May 1 is Those say. the restaurant. Bars. Okay. Yeah. I think they're going to extend out that, probably that shelter in place. Depending on the numbers we see, you know what I mean? I think it's all what's to come with the numbers. Yeah. Do you think the curve is being flattened currently? I don't think so. No. <laughs> After I saw the pictures of those spring breakers in Miami, you're kidding me. Yeah. Like, you guys. Seriously? Dude, the governor even said that they just can't flatten the curve anymore. Like, we it's just can't? a matter of, like... How, who's going to get it? Like, it's no longer a matter of, like, flattening the curve as much as it is, like, raising that line now. Raising? What do you mean, raising well, the, the line? The whole idea of flattening the curve is to get the curve below the threshold of how many icu beds we have and he basically said today that their focus is no more on flattening the curve it's more on getting that line of icu beds like higher oh my god so we can so so the curve guess how many icu beds we have in the state of minnesota um this is absurd no so oh no i watched it and and i immediately texted my nurse friends and so there's 235 icu beds that are being no 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 that are being used i thought that's how many we had so one of one of our good friends marketing intern golf babe of uh of TikTok, yeah, yeah, Lexi. Golf babe, Lexi. <laughs> she, uh, <laughs> she works at a hospital. I can't remember the name of it, but uh, there are 23 ICU beds, and they're uh, spacing out three of them for the coronavirus that are fully ventilated for like ready for people to be sick with that. But they can't use all of them because like there's pe- other people and other illnesses that need to be used. Yeah. So if they were to use, if they were to save all those ICUs for Corona, it wouldn't work. Yeah. So I don't know the exact number of how many we actually have, but they're using 235 of the actual number of ICUs. Does that make sense? So we have 235 available for Corona. But they can use more if they actually truly needed to. Okay. I saw that number on the press conference today. Yeah. Right. That's a that's a limit that they're setting themselves. So when he says raising the bar, he's saying yeah, he's Mm -hmm. saying instead of three per hospital, yeah, maybe four or five. Well, they're predicting like worst case scenario, we need like six thousand in the state, and we only have like a couple hundred available. What? Yeah, six thousand. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> I heard that too. Did you see? There was a picture. Yale converted their gym or gyms, multiple gyms, into like ICU beds yeah. for people well, who yeah, have that's Corona. Awesome. That's what he said. We're gonna do around here too. He oh said my we're start god! Using stadiums and like hotels for the mansion. The mansion. Yeah. We'll open up our house. <laughs> yeah. No, we won't. No, we won't. No, we're not doing that. 
can, can you imagine if we go to our roommates and say, hey, guys, so, uh, you know, Back Pocket, as you know, is doing well. Um, but the state has actually asked us to open up a few ICU beds in the podcast <laughs> studio. <laughs> Oh, that'd be so dumb, dude. So dumb. <laughs> but hey, I look, we're still operating. We're still we're still hitting it. So you think it's gonna get extended? That's so sad. I think so, yeah. God, I mean, because it. people are being ignorant. And to be honest, I was one of those people in the beginning. I totally was. So were we. Was we went like, to Chicago. Yeah, I was gonna say okay, I didn't want to even were, you, stop you saying there. I don't know I don't know if it was me. <laughs> we'll believe that out, dude. We didn't go Damn it. <laughs> no, but everyone knows. We had a whole podcast about it. Yeah, oh, we did. that's true. Yeah, no, we were. No, those we don't want to. We don't want to let people know that Sydney went there. Oh, I know. right, Sydney Shit. did not go to Chicago. Right, yeah. we can't person. confirm nor deny. Yeah, I'm not I thought say. I saw you there, but I don't think that was you. I don't know. Okay. I'm not gonna confirm it. I'm just gonna say, okay, I'll admit it. I was there, but I'm saying oh, shit. Wednesday. <laughs> okay, think about this though. Wednesday before we went, it was not that. I mean, it didn't feel serious here in no. the United States yet, or in Minnesota at least, or in the Midwest, or whatever you want to say. It didn't feel as serious yet. Yeah, you're I like, did okay. an entire joke about it, saying if you die from Corona. And you're in your 20s, you're a bitch. And I was like, oh, this is going to be such good juice. You know, I can't, I'm so glad I filmed this. And then I go back and watch it like literally two weeks later. And I was like, I can't put this out. I literally can't put this out. You're like, I'm I horrible. can't put this out. I'm a, I'm a bad person. I'm a bad person, but I wasn't a bad person at that time. No. To your point. Fair. But then Thursday, okay, Thursday I flew there. Friday I got there and I was like, oh, okay. This is more serious than I thought. But I'd already bought my tickets and I was already there and I couldn't find a flight home. So I was like, Okay, I guess we're doing St. Patty's Day. Let's do it up. Um, but think about it like and Sunday. And we did it up. And we did it up. Let's yeah. be real. We did it up. We did it up. And there was a lot of people doing it up too. Yeah. <laughs> we weren't the only ones. But Sunday, I was like, oh, I should not be here. Right, because then they shut down the bars and restaurants yeah. on our drive back and yeah. probably your flight back. Uh, so then I was like, oh, shit, we fucked up. Like, that was bad. And then I think, I don't know who mentioned it. I think it might have been Trump, not for sure. But I think he mentioned people in Chicago were a little bit out of line i don't know who it was but right that was like the first time we talked about this on our emergency corona cast like oh, yeah. that was the first time we felt as the young people of america that like we kind of fucked up yeah like that we do this all the time in terms of just partying and shit and that never had any ramifications until now yeah um it's just tough though because it's like cabin fever in terms mm-hmm. of like dude we've been hunkered down since december and usually april is when you know we start at least Sun getting out, out of the house, yeah. you know, like it's going to be 60 and sunny on Monday. It's like, Oh my God. Um, but man, I honestly, we have to stay inside. We uh, literally have real. to stay inside because how sad is it going to be when it's Memorial day and you can't go out on the lake? That's horrible. That is horrible. You know what they said too? someone was like, they're going to shut down big Island. I was like, okay, that's messed up. Don't say that. Shut, <laughs> shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Shut <laughs> your mouth. Just kidding. I will not go back there. But I'm just saying, like, you can't shut down Big Island. What? People just drive up. They're like, well, patrols. I'm like, no, people just drive up. Miami, the photos of Miami. I can't get over it, you guys. Right. They're bad. It's still going to happen. People are crazy. This is so they don't ridiculous. care. Yeah, Miami. So there was some other quote, like, people going in Washington and, like, national parks where, like, the cherries are blossoming and, like, there's just flocks of people just picking cherries. And then there was, like, a reporter saying, you guys can't be out here right now. And it was a whole thing. I'm like, oh, fuck God. you. I'm going to be here until we'll pick my cherries. there's literally a guy with a gun preventing me from <laughs> doing that. Like, what? I don't know how else. Like, literally having, like, the National Guard is, like, pretty much the only way you're going to get people to legitimately stay inside. Well, yeah. the most shame I'm getting is from grandparents. Like my grandma tracked me today. I was at the grocery store, mind you, but she tracked me. She goes, how's working from home? And then sends me my current location as if she oh. like caught me in the act. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you're kidding me right now. You're actually kidding. I'm like, I'm at the grocery store, grandma. Like, let's relax. And then I'm like, okay, I get it though. Cause like you're older, the older population is the one I actually feel bad for. They're freaking out. They're fr- they're tweaking. Oh, you see them in the grocery store? They're like, whoa. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, I would freak out if I'd I was an freaked. old person. Yeah. Think about this. You work your entire life. You work your ass off. You're in the mindset of you're told that when, you t- when you're 20 and graduate college or even took a job that, hey, you're going to bust your ass for the next 30, 40 years, and then you're going to reach paradise uh, when you retire. Uh, commit to life insurance. Commit to this. Commit to that. 401k, Roth, blah, blah, blah. Now you're finally there. Now you're finally freaking there and the coronavirus hits and you lose out on like 25% of what you earned. You, uh, th- supposedly this 
this virus thing that's coming out is actually causing issues with your own health. Like you're the highest at risk here. And so if you, if you go to retirement now, you have less money than what you had or thought you had yesterday. And you can't really even go outside because yeah. you're worried about all the young people getting you sick. No, I know. I can see why that is the boomer doomer. That's it's why the they boomer call it doomer. That. Oh my God. I boomer hadn't heard remover. that yet. Boomer remover. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jeez. God. Ooh. That one's even worse. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the only way it gets better is if the young kids stop party- partying and it's like, ugh. hence we, we decided it'd be a great idea to make a trifold. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I'm what so do you think glad about I... it, by the way? It's pretty cool. Well, right? I've been reading it. Don't mm-hmm. panic. Call your grandparents. See, we're just talking God, about them. Call them. Call them. Have you called your, oh, I guess you, you, you're you oh, in constant her. contact with your grandparents. Oh, yeah. She I can confidently say I have not called my grandparents yet. Co- I have called my grandparents. Come oh, on. Fuck. Man, I got to call my You got to get on that. I know. I do. <sighs> But anyways, what were we even talking about before? Look. Well, I would like to hear how the uh, journalism, mm-hmm. uh, you had that mindset. You came back to the U of M still finishing off school with journalism. And now you're putting that on the back burner with maybe hopes to get back into it because currently you're in healthcare. Yeah. Yeah. So came back to the U. I was kind of lost, obviously. Like I just was like, okay, I thought all this time I've been telling people like I'm, I'm going to be a sports broadcaster. And my problem, I think, was that I, I was telling people and getting more excited to tell people than I actually was to do the job, which is kind of like hard to admit. But I was like, dang, like that would be a cool, cool concept. Like, you know, speaking out to the world and like saying, you know, like, oh, my God, I get to be on TV. Like, that's kind of cool. Like in hindsight, it was kind of cool. It, It's not the cool that I like that came to me anymore. I'm like, I'm, I've matured a lot. It's not like what I want to be doing with my life. Like I really, really have sat there and thought about like, I'm not, I was not put here to just do a job. You know what I mean? Like I, I want to help people. I don't know how yet and how exactly that's going to be, but I'm like, I sat there like in Arizona when I had, we took a semester off and I was like, okay, what, what's actually important to me? Cause like right now I'm isolated. I don't have a lot of people here. I'm like, I'm kind of lost. Like I'm lost for what I want to keep doing. I'm like, I'm going to move back to Minnesota. It's going to be kind of embarrassing. People are going to talk about it. You know, it's like, it's, it is what it is. Um, but what do I want to do? And I'm like, I love helping people. Like, and I know a lot of people can say that, but it's like, I actually genuinely get joy from other people's reactions and how I see like something I'm doing affecting them in a positive way. Like if I can see that, like, that's when I feel like, oh damn, that was, that's fulfilling. That's what fulfillment is. And for a long time, like you, I think we all get kind of clouded to picking like a route. Like, is it money that is like going to fulfill me? No, I, I, for me, I'm like, I just want to be financially stable. Like, I don't really care. Like as long as I'm okay. And like each month the bills are not that painful to pay, or at least they might be painful, but I've got a few dollars to get what a Corona or something too. Oh, that was not supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> Corona and lime. A Corona lime is actually my favorite beer. So. I get away wow, with that going one. Going public with that as yeah, well. Yeah, I know, I know. Good time for that too. So so far we have was in Chicago allegedly and <laughs> loves the Corona and Lime. I can't confirm, <laughs> deny either. Anyway, anyway, no, but um, anyway, so I came back to the U. I was like, what's interesting to me? Writing, advertising, things like that. Like, what? How can I touch people without actually like talking to them myself? Like, how can I voice what I want to say without saying exactly what's on a prompter? Like. I just needed to twist like what I wanted to do and try to find a different route. So I went into advertising, ended up getting my degree in that in digital media. And like, I really, really like that. I I mean, it comes like so, not easy to me because it's, it's a constant challenge, but it makes sense to me. Things click like you get an ask to um, advertise something and instantly my mind goes like, oh, I could I could, you know, get them when they're not paying attention on the bus or like get them in an ad that looks like a game app. But like you know, like things like that. But I'm like, is that trickery? Is that wrong? That's another question I have. It's like, is advertising wrong? It can be really, really wrong, but I don't want it to be wrong because I don't want what I do to be wrong thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You don't want to just like make a killing off of tricking people. Yeah. Cause that's just not right. And a lot of it's sad, but a lot of the routes for companies is to trick people. Well, yeah, I think, I think a know? lot of it is just, it's all how they're how you make your money right like if you're if you're charged based on click rate you're gonna do everything you can to make your headlines click bait yeah right yeah but and i think that's kind of what we were touching on like the last time with ian was this i this idea that like you know advertising doesn't necessarily have to be tricky like Mm -hmm. i think that's one thing that's kind of changing right now is you know overly promoting and overly saying hey buy 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 or hey click 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 like people don't necessarily even want that anymore right 
um, a lot of the stuff that we do when we're when we you know go to a, a sponsor, a, an awesome company like Metro Mugs, who you know would would obviously love people to go to their page and buy a mug, whether it's Baby Yoda or just like any of the other uh, mug series you have, which is you know a great time to say go and you know check that out. Twenty percent off. Use code back pocket. <laughs> B a c k p o c k e t, um, you don't necessarily he the the Metro Mugs isn't coming to us saying hey we need one hundred clicks each month, uh, or each week or whatever, um, or else or else right or we're not paying you. It's like right. hey let's create a relationship. Let's let's be creative. Let's find let's you let's put our minds together to try and and grab the eyeballs for a good reason. Give them a reason to click on it. Yeah, and if they don't have a reason to click on it, like. Then that's good market re- that's good market feedback. Like, yeah. hey man, they didn't like your ad. <laughs> like, sorry, yeah. it's not working. Exactly. Yeah. So I love where your head's at on that. I mean, it's it's and it's hard because the yeah. advertising world right now, like, has got the big wigs and the old heads in there mm-hmm. that are like determinate their career on clicks and right. or on like the things that um, you have to be you have to use trickery to appease the people in the, the positions right now, whether it's the company or the actual agency. In both ways, uh, and that's the dr- the driver of success. It, right. It's like in only so many companies can actually show the value and like <coughs> offer advertising in like a, a welcoming to a community. Like uh, Ian Deloney brought up the the Nike ad when uh, Kobe Bryant passed oh, away. Oh yeah. One of the coolest things, and like that's a message. There's no trickery in that. That's just welcoming like who Kobe was and like showing the the world why Nike was able to help per- inspire the Kobe brand and the Kobe mantra, the mm-hmm. Mamba mentality. But like not everyone has that offering. Like when you're right. sitting in positions like you and I are in advertising, you're going for trickery and yep. that's the, what your objective is. Yeah. And it sucks. I mean, and I, I took a job post um, college, like and it was at a great agency and I, I liked my job, but um, I was, it was when I was sitting there and I was like, is this trickery? are the morals right and i wouldn't i would never say like who it is but it's like you just you kind of question your own like am i doing something wrong you know what i mean that's not a way to live that's not how we like grew up i've never thought i was going to be in a job where i'm like i might like making people less healthy by like doing this this is bad this is actually against exactly all of my morals like every single moral laid out so i was like maybe i do want to do advertising but maybe i need to take a step back and actually like Okay, because I was on the account management side. I'm still technically on like account management in general, but I'm like, what if I want to create? Like I need to take a step out. I need to learn like Photoshop again. I need to learn Adobe Illustrator again. I need to like get my creative mindset moving again instead of being the facilitator of like the asks. And I'm like, then I'll step back in when I'm ready for that. But that's why I like Declan and I had this conversation too. I was like, I'm trying to organize my hobbies. Like how does someone get a effing hobby? I won't even say the word. How do you get a hobby? Like that's an actual question I'm asking myself and using this time in quarantine to figure out because I have an issue with wanting to do everything under the dang sun. I tell you, I get so excited with new ideas. I'm like, oh my God, I could totally do that. I write it down. No way. I can't do like a hundred things in a day. So I'm trying to figure out like, how can I actually like create a hobby that I enjoy doing that can apply to my, like maybe my job, maybe a side hustle, whatever it may be. Maybe it's just helping people in general get really good at it and then keep doing it just because I want to do it. Not because I'm like, I need a hobby. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of like a circle of like, I need some clarity. You guys, seriously, I have a list literally right here of possible hobbies. I'm not kidding you. Can we go through them? Yeah. You want to? Yes. Okay. Let me flip to the page. Cause we have a potential hobby for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a hobby that I wanted to do with you guys. It's actually on here. Sweet. Okay. Mind you, these are just like my late night, like I had a few glasses of wine thoughts. So just be be aware of that. But designing shoes, I love shoes. Mm. I want to design shoes. Athletic shoes? Athletic shoes. Streetwear shoes, though, more. Okay. Yeah. Like the Nike Airs, like all of the Air Forces, they're so sick. And you could take it even further. I wrote it down down here, further down the hobby list. Um, it's painting and um, like actually painting physically on clothing like Mm. you know taking like a a white air force one like maybe like a tricked out version and just like following the lines or like giving it its own like little flash like that'd be sick sick. right yes yeah okay all right okay good that's a good hobby hot start um Um, drawing i used to draw all the time i tried to draw a vase the other day with a plant in it oh my god i'm that's rough oh i don't have the skill i lost it my Mm. magic touch is gone (laughs) 
<laughs> but I could get back into it because like charcoal drawings. Have you guys seen those? Yeah. Those are sick. Those are so The sick. shading. You just Sunset do a little. silhouettes and oh, stuff. Oh, God. Those are cool. Mm. Um, watercolor I wrote down here. They're all like creative, I think, you know, in, in general, just because that that was my. I was like my realm of work or so I yeah. thought I was so going like to. things like you genuinely are just interested yeah. in. Okay. Just things that like come to mind or I see someone that's good at it and you're like, Jesus, how did they do that? Right. Like, how did they get that good at it? How much time are they spending doing that? Like, I, it's so admirable seeing someone good at something. Like, even you guys don't realize like being good at hosting a podcast. Like, you've got your like shit together. And Thank you know you. what I mean? Like, it's seriously, it's so admirable. I don't think you hear that enough because mm-hmm. like it's it's cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. You got it. Um, Photoshop. Photoshop and Adobe. I think I mentioned that. Healthy cooking. That was the next one. Mm, wow. Yes. So we have like a lots of artistic things. That, so and then like just. I want to I make some. I know. Phone eats first. <laughs> <laughs> Not even that though. Okay. Here's the weird thing though. I hate social media, you guys. Oh. I have like a bad habit of not like, I don't like social media. I think it's because I work so much on it for work. And I think Andrew can totally attest to that too. Because you're on Facebook all the time, right? All day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, when you overdo it, it it actually just burns you out. Like when I'm, I manage a lot of like Instagram pages and in like previous positions, and I was like, oh my god, I can't do this anymore. Like even when you get to like your own brand, you know, you're supposed to have this own brand page. It's like, I don't really care. I don't care, and I wish I did, but I'm like, I'm a little burnt out, so I'm taking like a little break from it, and mm. then I'll come back to it. But mm. it's like it seemed, you know, like a lot of people like enjoy scrolling through Instagram. Like I like to see what people are up to, but God, it's just like. It's another thing to manage. It right. feels like another thing I have to like check off a list because yeah. I worked on it for so long. You know yeah. what I mean? And so many times it feels like you're having to do it for someone else because yeah. you're, you're doing it for a career and you want everyone in that career field to see you in a certain way. And that's when it gets most exhausting. Yeah. And thankfully, I have someone like Declan with the back pocket who literally when I think is like the worst post ever and like going to ru- ruin our brand or, you know, something stupid, like yeah. something extreme. And Dex like, I'm just going to post it. And I'm like, fuck, all right, whatever. And he posts it. And, like, then, like, the people that respond, like, actually see us organically. It's, like, it's never, like, a bad post that looks at us negatively. It's more something, like, super knucklehead or something far off. And I'm like, damn it, Dex, why do you have to paint us that way? And it's, like, actually, you're doing it in a way that shows us more truly. Yeah. And I'm thankful that I'm, like, when I'm drained with social media, Dex was like, hey, dude, this is just a tool to, like, have a, have a good time. Be a yeah. knucklehead on it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think that's the thing that... Uh, so, like, two years ago, um, I had that same exact mindset. Like, Really? We... Um, a- after, like, the first year of actually putting out podcasts, which was sweet. We did 36 uh, podcasts, which was awesome, in season one. And season two, we made the, the effort, okay, we are going to post on Instagram... Do we decide every day? Every day. Every single day we were going to post on Instagram. And we were going to figure out what our brand was and what we wanted to actually do. And that is something that I would, you know, challenge you. Like, mm-hmm. don't post, you don't necessarily have to post on Instagram every day. But find something that you like on any of the social platforms. Yeah. And just, like, send a tweet out every day. Post a TikTok every day. Maybe post on LinkedIn every day. Yeah. Um, I do like LinkedIn. Right. I'm going to be honest. That's the one social media I'm like, oh, I love it here. Really? <laughs> yeah. So, well, there you go. Like, I, I started posting on LinkedIn. I actually just jumped to that story. Like, I I po- started posting on, we had Mark, this guy mean, named Mark Me- Mitri on uh, Link. We found him through LinkedIn and yeah. had him on the podcast. And he's just an incredible guy. If you go on LinkedIn, I'm sure you'll find I'm gonna him. I'm going to find him. He's, a, he's an awesome guy. Um, but his strategy was, okay, I'm going to post on LinkedIn every day and just post my thoughts, my feelings, uh, you know, what I'm doing, that kind of stuff, and see what happens. And the guy's, you know, absolutely blown up. Um, so I took that same strategy, and it's so funny how many times uh, people will come up to you, come up to me or Andrew or anyone, like, man, I love your LinkedIn posts. Like, really? You're the only you're the only 24-year-old that I graduated with that actually posts on LinkedIn, and I actually enjoy it because, again, back to Andrew's point, Sometimes it's just knucklehead shit on LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Like I posted my comedy set on LinkedIn. Oh, you uh, did. I love yeah, that you I, did I that. posted like all kinds of different stuff that's not really the the quote unquote like LinkedIn field. But I will tell you from the process of doing that, I'm just so much more self aware. I'm I, I have so much like happiness um, doing that kind of going through those kind of exercises. Not because people are you know so excited about you know, the oh, yeah, I saw your posts and stuff, but just like that constant process of feeding that creative side of your mind is how you find the hobby. So like true, you just listed five or six things, right? Mm-hmm. Um, 
all great. Um, and there's probably a theme of like, you know, doing sh- uh, like maybe painting shoes and then doing a watercolor painting of them and then posting that on like using Pinterest your hands. Or, you know, using your hands, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's you're not going to find it the first time, right? No. You're not going to find your 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 actual hobby the first time, but you're going to do it. You're going to go through it one time and be like, OK, cool. I liked these parts of it. Now, when I go back the next time, maybe I incorporate something different and include it in the thing that I liked within the activity. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I totally get that. So, like, through all the five of those things, you should paint on shoes. You should watercolor. You should post it on Instagram uh, and or on LinkedIn, honestly. Yeah. And, well, why not? And, like, kind of just detail that journey. But, like, that's four or five different steps there that you're now seeing, like, okay – what what's in there that I actually enjoy? Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it totally does. No, I hadn't thought of it in that journey kind of style either. So that's helpful too. Yeah, I mean, like, I feel like, because I'm like ambitious to start all these new things, but then I, I think I'm overly ambitious because then I'm like, I want to be good at it right away. And it's just a bad, right. it's a bad habit. I think like some of us just have this like... W- some people understand that it takes work and I understand it does, but it's like, I'm like, d- I get down on myself almost for like not learning it quick enough or not being good at it quick mm. enough or not knowing how to go about starting something. And then you're like, but I'm, I'm being my own critic. I'm like literally not even giving myself the opportunity of room to do it. Right. What like, how is that fair to myself? Mm. And I've, that's what I've started to realize in quarantine. No, I'm kidding. But this year, just in general with, with more time that I've given myself, I'm like, I literally am the only person that's putting myself down. Like the only person limiting my skills, only person limi- limiting my hobbies. Like, Mm. or ability to like get better at a thing because I jump around too much. I'm a, like, I'm doing one thing and then I'm doing another thing. And then I'm like, I'm over here. I'm over there. Like I need to just, you just got to hone in on your focus. And I think that comes with learning how to enjoy alone time too. Sure. And it, it all plays into it. You know, And it's truly like having that belief in yourself is the hardest thing. Um, reflecting on like my year from graduating to now, I've, I was bouncing around left and right. I worked at a, uh, a company removing lake weeds in Lake Minnetonka, life's a beach all summer. And I felt less than all of my friends because they graduated and they're working nine to five jobs already putting money into their 401k. And I'm out on, in the water pulling lake weeds with, with my brother and, and should be having like the time of my life being like, Hey, I'm 23. I'm not structured in a corporate America. And I actually should be like appreciating this. Yeah. But I didn't have that mindset. And then I like was, and then I was like, all right, I need to find money now that this summer's over. And I worked a temp job and I was like, all right, I have a steady income. I'm going to settle for this. And then Declan's like, don't settle. You should push yourself a little bit more. Then I worked in advertising for a little bit um, for Media Bridge and I ended up getting fired from that because I didn't fit the mold that they wanted. And that was like a six month position. And that, that made me feel less than And I'm sitting there like I'm not worthy of corporate America. I have worked my entire life playing football um, and I don't want to get in football anymore. What am I supposed to do? Like I have this ambitious mindset to help yeah. others and to do like extraordinary things but i'm sitting here looking at myself less than every single person around me how am i going to make that impact and uh this podcast has kind of been a subtle reminder every single time we have a conversation with someone sitting across from me i'm like oh my god i'm, I'm literally hearing the tools why can't i implement it and then i beat myself up that i can't implement yeah. hearing people in my own situation beating themselves up it's like a constant battle left right. and right like i'm still going through it today and I actually found something that I love doing every single day and I still think from time to time like are you really doing what you're supposed to be doing and I think that challenge ultimately is what the driver of you continuing to be better always looking at yourself reflecting being like is this necessary and you kind of fine-tune it left and right but if you always look at it negatively and you push yourself down the uh the opposite path then you'll find yourself in holes and simple things like drinking your water and meditating and finding maybe a basic routine, but it doesn't have to be super structured. Yeah. All bring balance and that equilibrium from all this chaos and bring a little bit of order. So I relate to you a ton, Sid, and I, I thank you for sharing that. I think yeah. that's really dope. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that, too. The I, sharing other way, too. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I think, like, for you, too, like, just just going after the, the accepting, like we talk about all the time with our average, like the average, like the average quality and like Mm -hmm. what, what that really is. And it's, you know, yeah, we're all average. Yeah. We're not going to be great that first time we, we try a hobby for the first time. But like, if you just simply accept that and, and see how you can get better, simply just doing that, taking all the negative out of it, 
you're just going to build and it's just going to get better and you're going to have more fulfillment from doing it every single time. And, uh, like you have, you have the intangible, right? Like you have the things that you want to do in your head yeah. and you have the ambition and the accountability to actually do it. Yeah. You're just kind of all over the place, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. it's not that you're, you tried one thing, quit and then didn't do anything. No, you, you just didn't follow back into it because maybe just thinking about it negatively or something and then just jump to the next thing. Right. right. So just simply being aware is going to catatapult you. I'm I stoked. think so too. I'm yeah. hyped. Phenomenal. I'm hyped. And I'm hyped for stuff to come with us. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. I think I love, I love the sneaky plugs on know, like what sneaky. we're doing and not telling anybody what it is. <laughs> I feel like we got to leak it a little bit, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cause it's, it's happening Let's to leak. an extent. Yeah. We'll make it happen. We'll leak it. It's happening. Like when we say we're going to do something, we do it. Right. Um, I mean, who, who, should, who should say what it is? I feel like you do because you, you, you came up with the I, name, yeah. kind of. Sure. Well, What's well, 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 right. We don't know if it's the name. I was yeah, going to say, but, yeah. but wow. I, I kind of, yeah. Jeez. yeah, yeah. Woo. A little I'll pressure say, there. I'll say this. Declan came to me um, end of last year, and we're trying to plan out 2020 goals. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to like structure everything, do every single thing we did last year, and just do it a little bit better, whether it's events, this actual podcast, uh, selling apparel. Uh, left and right we just want to do the same exact thing and do it just better this year and Declan comes with me with this idea of like hey I want to do another podcast um, my my mom actually thought it'd be a really cool idea after we did our blind date podcast to kind of replicate that that as a side podcast and I was like I'm not helping you at all with that <laughs> if you want to do that that sounds like a lot of time I'm going to focus on our lane and then uh, let's go the app came to us who is a dating app um, centered around going to events and they're like, we would like to partner with you. And Deck, I'll let you take it from here. Yeah. So then he's like, yeah, I'm just looking for like unique experiences. Like I, I really would love to leverage you guys as a podcast just, you know, to get the word out and, and maybe partner to like maybe get some of your young audience uh, to sign up for our app and, you know, go on dates. And that's when I came up with the, like we, I've already been thinking of this idea of like a first date podcast or, or something to that extent. And that's when I was like, oh, the the idea and like the opportunity are now colliding. Like to Andrew's point, it in hindsight, it, it would have made no sense for me to go off on my own and start my uh, own side podcast underneath Back Pocket and then like work on that at the same time I'm working on Back Pocket. It just wouldn't have made sense. But one thing that we are trying to do is like collaborate with everybody on this podcast and the, the different people around us, you know. We, we were talking about dominating Sandbox last year. Now we've got a lot of connections, so now we're trying to play mm -hmm. in the Sandbox. Just playing Ooh, in the Sandbox. Oh, I love that. Right. I love that analogy. Mm -hmm. So with Let's Go, we came up with the idea to uh, create this first date experience. So you can go on the Let's Go app. You, um, you'll be notified when uh, there is a first date experience to go and actually record a podcast. Now this is where you come in because hey. my mom brought up very wisely. She said... Hey, if you if if a first date shows like if this couple shows up, whether they know each other or not, to record a podcast um, at some venue, uh, the last thing they want to be is outnumbered significantly. So you can't have a guy host this first podcast experience as much as you two knuckleheads want to. It's just <laughs> not going to work. So it's like, OK, who would that possibly be? Who like what kind of girl would want to get them themselves out there? Um, you know, provide some value and, and have a really good conversation. And that's when, when you and I were at Red Rabbit that one mm -hmm. time, I was like, holy shit, Sid really wants to actually do something like this. Yes. So then again, ideas, opportunity collide again. Here we are in quarantine, but absolutely <laughs> going to execute on this idea when everything comes to fruition. I'm so excited, you guys. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to spill the beans earlier. I want to spill it to everybody because I'm like, God, this is like, this is a hobby too. Yeah, because what like, time are we just... at right now? Uh, 49 minutes. We're oh, 49. Wow. Holy oh, my shit. God. Whoa. But anyways, uh, yeah, if you know, if you're a true listener, you got to you gotta listen 50 minutes in to get the real shit. Right? Yeah. <laughs> to you get the meat. The yeah. meat is Anyways, at the I interrupted end. you. No, I literally was just going to say I'm so excited because I don't know why, but I like to think that I can make situations less, less awkward with, especially with people who don't know each other. And I love like bringing people together. Mm -hmm. I think it's so fun when you've got like, let's say two groups of friends even, and you like bring them together and then, Oh, you're like, Hey, I'll talk to this person, talk to this person. Oh, now everyone's friends. Like then you can walk away and they're hanging out and you're like, ah, that was me. That was me. <laughs> that was me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I did that. No, but I just think it's fun. Like it's fun to make people comfortable around each other. And it's fun to also like make it a little funny. 
Yes. Because I think that's going to be an underlying piece in there, too. Right. But Mm -hmm. anyway. We're stoked. I'm hyped. And going off that, like at the the comedy show with Declan, when uh, we were watching Declan do stand up, that was a really cool moment for me because I like some of my close friends from college, some of my back pocket friends, some altar friends, like Mm -hmm. all sitting around the table. And I was the hub and spoke of like, hey, this is my table. Like These are the people that came here for deck. But I get to like meet, introduce everyone to uh, each other. And like those are the moments. It's like, oh, this is dope. And if you can scale that in a podcast format, I think that'd be really cool. I think so, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Should we leak the name, maybe? Uh, no. Yeah, well, no, I, yeah. I, I think we can. We, we can vote The idea, the name idea. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. the name of Input. the podcast that I'm thinking right now is called We Met on a Podcast. Oh. Mm. Ty? God, thoughts? that's good. I think it's a pretty good idea. Okay. All I right. think it's so simple. It's yeah. like, it's almost sleek because it, it kind of comes off as like, it would have maybe like a cheesy intro, like right. a cheesy intro song. I don't know why I'm thinking mm-hmm. that. And we checked not on... Yeah, Any, no trademark like, yeah, issues. No, trademark issues, yeah, no yeah. podcast Hasn't names been already. Yet. So it's kind of funny because it'd be like how they would, you know, if they were to go on a date, it'd be like how'd they, how'd, how'd they meet? Yeah, well, how'd you guys meet? Yeah, it'd be like the exact line they'd say. Hmm. We it's probably what you were thinking of, but I just, that you, makes sense You to wanted me. to create the connection. That just makes I love sense that. Yeah, yeah, no. So I, thank you. I, I absolutely <laughs> love Coming that. Coming up with that name. Absolutely. It was good. Um, but going back to kind of your hobby stuff, um, and you, you mentioned something that was just amazing of, and have continued to mention this idea of just like um, wanting to like impact and inspire others. Um, what is it about that that like it's such like a lofty – it's not a lofty. It's just very existential. Like mm-hmm. it's hard to just like do that, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, are there – is there anything specifically that you like you've done in your day-to-day where you're like, wow, I'm, I'm good as shit at that. Like I could – that is that is providing the value that is what i want to be doing have you had any of those implications you know i mean this is kind of in a different setting than work because i always like think like things have to be like work setting but at home i mean um i'm an older sister i've got a younger sister she she like admittedly is like i look up to like when you approve something like that's when I think it's right, which I don't know if that's great advice because God only knows what I'm proving, but no, she, she just, she looks at me for a lot of guidance. And I think a lot of people who are an older sibling can say that, but, um, you know, admitting, admittingly, like we kind of raised ourselves in a sense, like my, my mom just, she was off working. My dad, my parents divorced young age, like kind of, you know, a TMI situation there, but it's like my sister and I had each other's back. So like every day when I help my sister, she's like, said, I don't feel good about X, like, or I, I really want to be good at this, but I don't feel like I, you know, she's like kind of like putting herself down. She's three and a half years younger. Um, and you know, we all do that. We all, we all get into those things and we go to someone we trust and we're like, I just like, I don't feel good about this. You're like, I don't, I don't know how to do this. And I'm, I feel like I can guide her and I, it just like comes to me and I'm like, no, Taylor, you're looking at it from the wrong angle. Like you got to look at it like this. And sometimes I give her advice and I'm like, I need to take my own advice. Like, why am I telling someone this and not even living by that? But that like life coaching and like even I coach her through a lot of like workout routines and stuff like that as I'm going to start hopefully coaching at Alter soon once this pandemic lifts. Cross your fingers, everybody. Nice. Um, but no, I just like the coaching, the life coaching thing almost. Like it, it I just feel like I, I can see a bigger picture for other people, even though I can't sometimes for myself, like I can see their path. Like I see what they're good at. Like, and, and it doesn't take very long. I feel like I'm good at picking up on that. Like she's got a strong personality. She, people listen to her when she speaks and like, she's just got to like lean into those like qualities that are really, really strong. Cause she doesn't realize that she, you know, she might not be seeing those things yet. And granted she's young, but that aspect of like life coaching, like I really, really like that. Like, I feel like I could take that further. Mm-hmm. that's what i've noticed lately Damn. yeah i love that a lot that's thank you that's legit yeah and I, that's that was that was kind of the intention of my question too was like um was there something outside of work that you are finding like a ton of fulfillment so i'm super stoked that yeah. you answered that question that way well, but knowing where we're at in this podcast uh and we had already alluded to it earlier you know we're all very average we're all incredibly we're all wildly average people um and, you know, this is a this is a time where we usually, you know, we unpack those average qualities, those things Ooh. that make us average. So I want to ask you, Sid, what is your average quality? Oh, God, that's packed. That's a packed question. Very loaded. I love it. Um, honestly, lately, what I've thought about is I love for another thing like public speaking. But in that aspect of like like life coaching and like helping other people. I'm totally average at public speaking, totally average at it. But I've got these goals as to where I want to go with it. I'm like. 
in in five to ten years i want to be able to stand up on in front of a crowd of like two thousand plus and be like confident and like mm-hmm. know what the hell i'm saying and what i'm talking about and that's like i know it i i don't know why i get a thrill from being in front of people sometimes that thrill is like holy shit i'm gonna pass out sometimes that thrill is like i think people are really listening to what i'm saying and i could be the voice of reason in someone's head and like help them and guide them further and that's like what i want to be but like right now I've got the tools in front of me. Like I've got a lot of opportunities at work to like press into that public speaking like area, but I'm not good at it right now. Not good at it right now. Still got that whew, like hotness coming on me, but mm-hmm. you're crushing this podcast. Hey, thank you. Yeah. yeah you're <laughs> crushing it. This is, <laughs> thank you, said you. This is your first podcast. hundred percent. First podcast. First time hearing like yourself and the headphones and everything. Yes. See, and you even texted me before. You're like, Oh, I'm like nervous and stuff. I'm like, yeah, oh, everyone says that. Like how nervous are you actually? Yeah no sense of nerve nerves oh, from from our perspective at least like i'm very very impressed on how you speak like when you Thank say you. like you're going you want to be a public speaker like i see you oh my god thank I you i see you oh, that's made my day yeah mm-hmm. no absolutely i feel it yeah and those two thousand people are they're going to be there for you yeah, yeah. hopefully yes. hopefully but actually, hopefully i'm giving them something that they can take away and actually put towards something else yeah, they'll put their, their life ba- they'll put in their back pocket in their back pocket um, right Boom. So that begs there. the question, Sid, what is in your back pocket when pressure becomes stress and anxiety is rising? What do you use in your back pocket to overcome these situations? You know, if it's not my to-do list, literally just writing everything down and scratching them off, which I think a lot of people do. Um, I think like my, my back pocket is, I think it's my like drive to try new things. Like I feel mm-hmm. like when I'm like, I'm so freaking stressed at work. I'm like, I cannot calm myself down. I step away. I literally look to my hobby list and I pick up the book that I've probably been reading for six years and I just pick it right back up. And I just like, I take a second to step away or like I do something that I know I can tangibly do and it like re like re grounds me again and redirects me in the right direction. Like I think I'm, I'm a, my ability to like pick my brain up and like move it to a different thing instead of letting that one work piece overwhelm me beyond beyond measures and like cross into like family and cross into whatever I'm doing on the side. I, I think I'm, I'm good at separating those things. I kind of like went from two different things right there, but like separation of all my different things going on. I think I'm good at that. Mm-hmm. That's what I keep to now, stay sane. Now I'll never, and I'm saying this uh, with the, with the aspect of I'll never understand the female brain. I never <laughs> will. I'll never get it. And I'll never even try to understand. Don't be real. No, no. Um, but what you just said, made me think that I might have a chance <laughs> because I'll help you. The fact that you can take one thing that you're like struggling at the physically in front of you and just package that up and then move to the next thing and have a totally clean slate to attack it. That is insane. Like I, I to me, there's no way like that's m- loosely multitasking. Mm-hmm, there's kind no of. way in hell that I would m- m- as a guy, I would never be able to do something like that. That's so incredible. And the fact that you're able to do it as efficiently as you're saying, where you're just like trying the to ambition of like, okay, I got to go, I got to go, you know, blow some steam off and then go read this book. And yeah. Just like actually focus on the book. And most of the time it's probably not the book. It's probably like a workout or something like that. Cause Even I'm, I horribly, I don't read as much as I probably should. Mm. That's another ad. Maybe we can hold you accountable. We can start like a a, like a book club or something. Ooh, virtual book club, Zoom 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 book club. We have to get mini ones so they fit in our back pocket. Mm. Uh, (laughs) That's a branding thing. (laughs) Dang it! Just you can't physically fit a lot in your back pocket. That's bad for us. Can you imagine how thick the book would have to be though? It'd be like little. Would it be? Yeah, to not ruin your posture. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, geez. Yeah. The worst thing is, you put anything in your back pocket, you're you're ruining your posture. Oh yeah, you're ruining. So don't put anything in your back pocket. Don't Don't. put anything. Just have us. Just have it. Have us in your back pocket. (laughs) Have you? Oh, you. Have you in the in your back pocket? That's really what it comes down to. That. Yeah. Say that one more time. Have you in your back pocket? Oh, that's good. Mm-hmm. Nice. That kicks ass. That did. That's, yeah. a, that's, a, that's a TikTok. <laughs> yeah, it's a TikTok. Oh shit, we just made a TikTok. Well, I hate to say it. I downloaded TikTok yesterday. What? Don't 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 hate I to know, say but, that. I know, but I feel like there's this like, oh, did you do it? And then people all, they're like, yeah, I did. Like the, people started admitting it. Right. Okay. I'll, I also admit I made one. Okay, that's it. I'm done. Sick, yo. Was I it made da- one. Was it a dancing one? Yes, I made it with my friends. I hate that. I hate that I said that. But God, it's actually kind of good. I'll share it. I'll <laughs> is share it blowing it. up? It actually is. People are actually liking it. I think it has like 
almost 2,000 views. There you go. Just randomly. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Hey, Another we got, hobby. We could talk about. We could talk about TikTok for hours. Oh god. We just don't. started. We started our TikTok like oh my. six weeks ago. Give us a follow, please. We'll follow back. I'll follow. Um. No, we like, We're actually holding the stern follow back. No, no, no. We'll, oh. we'll follow her back and then follow unfollow. Sid. I thought um, you meant to the listeners. Oh, no. well, no. We can follow them. We just oh, we right. we hold the strong sixty nine as following. We don't want to okay. over cloud our uh, our following. You know, that's for fair the, enough, for algorithmic purposes. We, we want to make sure our for you page is is popping. All right, and giving us the things that we actually want. But similar, like we started our TikTok like six weeks ago, and we've known about TikTok for well over a year oh yeah like it's been around for a while and we've seen it actually you know like one of our good buddies uh piff peterson he's mm-hmm. got like over two million on there oh man and he was the one of the first guys to tell us like hey like you tiktok absolutely fucks like you gotta get on the platform you december 2018 yeah december of 2018 he came to us and said that oh um, it wasn't until january of 2020 that back pocket decided to, to get on it and we're at like two thousand followers right now mm-hmm. had a couple of videos get over 100k no way yeah and that's actually so sick like we're gonna pass our instagram following by easily by the time this quarantine thing's over and we do a tiktok every single day you guys do yeah i didn't know that you know why though i think i didn't download in the beginning i think it's because i was like a little bit nostalgic and missing vine Mm. i hate to say i'm miss vine right i miss vine i love vine and now I kind of think I like TikTok. I'm not going to say I love it yet, but I, yeah. I did, I like I'm TikTok. getting there. I like TikTok. I, I like it. The I'm getting is, the love, though. I'm getting there. The thing about like learning to love it is when you the second you realize that you don't have to dance on TikTok and still that's, absolutely blow up, that's when you know that TikTok absolutely slaps. Oh, easy. Seriously, like we don't we have a hard no dance rule uh, at Back Pocket Corp. Actually. Um, we just post there. the stuff that we like that, that represents us. So take that with a grain of salt. Maybe you start love it. Speak, doing some motivational speaking or whatever, life coaching you know, on, maybe, on TikTok. Maybe that's my platform. Or maybe it's just for weird, weird TikToks. Because actually that's, do. yeah, exactly. I'm going to decide that. Right. Or maybe both. Or Who yeah, cares? you can start painting Air Force Ones. Or yeah. You, or art, Literally man. you could do that and that would do it well. Might, it you would might have a niche. blow up. Okay, okay, mm-hmm. okay. See, I've got all kinds of endless things going on here. <laughs> yes, uh, but we've gotten to the time in our podcast where we could like to open up the question floor to Ty Webb, producer Ty Webb. How you doing over there, brother? I'm doing pretty good. How's the stream going? Well, really, really? Yeah, well, I don't know. Why you're so surprised, but oh. yeah, it's going well. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's because Sydney cares. Okay, no, I, I do care. That. We well, all well, care. Declan, you guys, Declan had a reason to like think it would be going differently because he upped the. Quality. The quality a little bit. Yeah, it's we're been, streaming at 1080. Uh, we're live streaming at 1080 now. Oh, geez. It's crystal sick. clear. I can't super tell the difference, to be honest, but oh. it's work, It's working fine. Okay. Like, it's not choppy or anything. Yeah. Dope, no, so. that's that's good. I think it's probably our um, so upload and download speed. Uh, it, who cares? Yeah. Regardless, I, Andrew said, you know, now we open the time up for Ty to ask a question. Yeah. I just want to let you know that you can ask a question whenever the hell you want. Yeah, I know. I've been participating a little bit more in this, pod- right. this podcast. Right. And I think that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think it's great. You know, yeah. we look back at the footage and we maybe look at the numbers and we're like, hmm, well, Ty talked more here. Our numbers mm. are skyrocketing. Of course. It might have to be with you, but I think it has, probably has more to do with Sydney. Probably a little bit. <laughs> I would say so. She's got the face for podcast. Podcasts. Oh, I don't know if that's, that's, that's good. I don't know if that's good. That's why we just met. That was, <laughs> that was super forward. <laughs> Ouch. That's a diss. Sure. That was a diss. That was, that a was diss? straight up diss. When you're, yeah. Like, you never heard the joke, like, my mom says I have a face for radio. You've never heard that? No, I've heard that. So We're like, live streaming. Oh, on that's Instagram, true. that's visual, and on YouTube. Oh. Okay, fair. Also visual. She got the face. But the She's term podcast is typically, you know, radioed. It's an audio Good point. Audio okay. Yeah. Okay, so Sydney. Yeah, what's your fucking <laughs> question, dude? I got a. I, I, so you're going to be hosting a podcast where people are going to be finding love. Yes. Probably. Hopefully. Um, Whoa. Are you, <laughs> do, do you yourself have any experience with love, first of all? Oh, that's actually a good question. Wow. This is that's just my first question. No, the second that's. one's even better. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so hurry up so I get this. Okay, one. sorry. Um, <laughs> no, no, to be honest, and I'll admit something, the, the one, I'd say like the actual love that I've ever had, like outside of family, I assume is what we're going for since that's the podcast theme. Um, I, my boyfriend lived at ASU, went to ASU, and I decided to go to ASU junior year. Little tidbit that I didn't 
slip in there was he went to ASU. That's a big mm. tidbit. That's uh, a big tidbit. I know, <laughs> Justin. Well, because the, <laughs> tidbit. <laughs> the, the the tidbit. No, because you know what? It okay. Now that I'm out of the relationship, a little disclaimer there. But it's like it it did totally guide me to ASU. I wanted to leave the state. I didn't know where I wanted to go. I chose ASU. I wonder why. My parents were like, "Are you serious?" But I did. I did have love, and I actually it was like it was awesome. But it wasn't the right time in my life. I don't think if that answers your question. Right. So I had it. I'm lucky that I had it. Um, but it's you know it's gone because. I'm I'm 22, gonna be 23. I for what I want to do and where I want to go, that wasn't the right timing. You're 23 as of this podcast. Released. As of yes, right. true. 23. Mm-hmm. God, when, it feels good birthday? to say Jordan year Friday quarantine. Happy birthday! Thank you. This my, is your birthday song. It isn't very long. Uh, hey, oh, God, that was good. My second question: Do you know anything about love? This could be a question for your podcast. But do you know anything about love languages? I do actually. Um, I took the love language test. Okay, well, great because my favorite question at like parties is to go up to people and say, "What are your love languages?" Oh my god! And either solicits a response where they're like, "What the hell are you talking about?" And then you explain it, and you're like, "Wow, you're a very caring, emotional person." Or ladies love that they do know what you're talking about, and then they're like, "I can't believe you also know what it is." So, what are your love languages? Um, my well, because there's like it's you might have to help me with this because it it's words gi- of affirmation, gifts, acts of service, quality time physical touch there's five quality time is number one is my number one top three um quality time words of affirmation and um wait you want to name them one more time physical touch (laughs) gifts acts of service it's acts of service is your third yeah yeah okay yeah Mm -hmm. the gifts thing you know i feel like is that embarrassing to get as one dude if it is i throw out i like don't yeah i was gonna say like i Luckily, that's not what I got. But who wants like, oh, I just want a gift from you. Like, d- then what? Is, who are you loving? Like, this guy's got like a clear. I mean, like, sorry, but who are you loving? A little bit of a. You know, what is it called? Gifts or yeah, you loving you know, the guy? yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. So you're going to anyway. come across those people while you're hosting the show. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I might not ask them who they're loving, but yeah, I, I might come up with. Something. That's Yo, a who are you loving? Who, who are you, what are you doing? What, what, what's going on? No, you should be like that. I know. I probably, I probably will. I probably will. To be honest, I'm a little straightforward. So. <laughs> no, I, that's awesome. I there is like definitely a joke somewhere in there. Like if you're taking gifts, what you doing? You know, like I don't think there's. Well, it's just like it just, why is it a love language though? That's what I don't understand. Like, it's just like a way you like to receive or give love. Yeah, it's but like, who doesn't like getting gifts? Well, it's not that like just because it's five out of five that you don't like it. It's just not as important to you. Right, but like. It's I like, feel like uh, of the other fo- of the other five, like the other ones are like very specific. Well, it doesn't need to be like like an expensive gift. It could be like just something. Yeah, like, I think it's just like the act yeah. of like somebody thinking about you and like getting like you know Making like the whole dinner thing, like, or something. It's the that's thought that counts. That's yeah. an act of service, though. That's the that's really yeah, it's, what I was it's getting like. At. It is get, mm. it gets a little twisted, but here's how I separated it. Mm. Okay, dinner great. If someone wants to buy me dinner, that's that's kind of nice. That's an act of service. I appreciate you. I'll say thank you. I went on a date one time, a first date, and he brought me a present. That's super nice, okay? Like, a little awkward, though. That's weird. Like, you're like, exactly, it's weird. Went on a second date, wasn't really a date, actually, it was like a group get-together. He brought me and only me a gift. Oh, I got the serial killer probably. It's, yeah. Wait, like, what were the gifts, weird. though? weird. The first one, what was it? It was like, oh, first one was a bottle of wine. I was like, okay. Yeah. I can't be mad about that. Thank you so much. That. Yeah. Second one were earrings. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this guy is a serial killer. Wow. Did, do you still have earrings? I do, and I have to say I wore them not that long ago. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? Okay, but I'm not in contact with this person. I don't even know where he is. Hopefully not, like, around, but they're kind of cool earrings. But, like, he told me the story. Like, he bought them for someone. Okay, I can't. This is a horrible story. He bought them for someone, like, on a trip in Colorado at, like, a like an art at a gathering. Yeah, at a dispensary. <laughs> they're weed little. No. Um, they're... So at fun. like an art gallery like a woman made art and she also made like e- earring art and like jewelry art and he like was like i'm gonna buy these for a woman for he didn't it. have anyone at that point and nor uh. nor did he have me nor did he ever have me it's just it's very odd yeah, he never had it, you no no you know what i mean though it's like by that <laughs> yeah that was terrible to say but by that it's like i never even like alluded to more than one date you know what i mean mm-hmm. like so it was like and yeah. but then you wanted like six more because you no, realized that you kept getting gifts exactly you want with them. We're, we're, yeah exactly he was trying to condition gifts. you like a dog exactly probably it Pavlov's worked dogs. for dating no yeah. <laughs> no, no but you should have just that was creepy sh- it was totally creepy 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, you should have. Okay, thank you. Sh- you should have yeah. turned it into a business. Honestly, <laughs> hindsight is <laughs> reselling the gifts. Think about if you had a reselling platform of like things I get from this guy or <laughs> things I get from dudes. <laughs> just like, so I funny. feel terrible. I probably sound like a horrible person, but like I, I appreciated it, but it was just creepy to me. Yeah. I don't know. Mm. Mm. You don't sound like a horrible person. Okay, thank God. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll say it. Yeah, and I think thank everybody you. else will also agree. Yeah. He, I, you it know, going comfortable. Yeah, that is interesting. That is so interesting. <laughs> The uh, I do want to ask though, like, what kind of question should we ask to these people on uh, y- y- whether it's a first date or maybe it's a couple that are together? Um, I'm trying to think of like questions or things that we should ask. I think uh, like, and and coming from the standpoint of like, one thing that kind of sucks about first dates uh, or dates in general is like it gets way too interviewy. Yeah, like where you're you're asking each other like, oh, Sid, where are you from, or where'd you go to college, like kind of like asking things about the past and sometimes that comes off judgmental Mm -hmm. so maybe coming up with a question that gets them talking about a topic or something that they can relate on that's kind of what i'm going for i think that's a good call i mean and maybe this would be wrong but it's like what was your worst first date because i feel like it then it gets like this everyone's off like their high horse of like you know what i mean like gotta act perfect gotta be like gleaming for this new person it's like Mm -hmm. just say what your worst first date situation was is that wrong to talk about other dates maybe no but if it was a like a plotted question maybe not you know what i mean like oh my god i went on this date and this guy like something just weird or whatever it then i feel like people have like a little bit of the nerves subsided right you know what i mean yeah just like and then they can just kind of talk or like tell a story it's like i think the storytelling versus interview questions it was what we want to go for mm-hmm. so then you can like actually get to know them mm-hmm. right yeah, yeah get to know more what you they're know? like in the current time rather than like knowing that they're also from minnesota You're like or wow something. you went to the u as well that's wonderful i did as Sick. well like, yeah wow. do you know this person it's like nope there's fifty thousand people that go to this school man oh Sorry. Yes. Th- thought I'd ask. <laughs> thought, thought I'd, I'd ask. ask. You know, gotta throw it out there. That's the worst, dude. <laughs> That's just the worst. People That's do it all the time. I hate when people do that to me. Why? Do you, the, do you, do you know? No. Cause, <laughs> but, no it's, Why would I? Well, the reward of actually knowing is kind of sweet. You know? It's fun when it does happen, right? That's why you continue to do it. Right. You know what would be funny, though? Just like going back to that first date podcast situation. It's like, what if we asked them prior what their first, like, what could be the worst thing that could happen first date or what, like, what's a first date pet peeve? It happens, mm. and it happens. That's terrible. Not planning it on them, but it would it right. would it would We're be funny to see. Th- no, yeah. no, yeah. not not to plan it or anything like that. But like, it would be funny to see. Like, would yeah. would this thing happen, or, or is the person yeah. going to be like, oh god, like notice it right away, or what's right. going to happen? I you don't know, know. That that does bring up a good idea, though. Like, they should have a questionnaire, a a, ta- a small questionnaire, right? Or just like if we knew if we knew who they were, and like Sid was able to go and do research on both of them, and like. <laughs> Well, they, they just under like she lightly. knows she knows a <laughs> context she, questions. Yes, yeah, yeah. So it's yes. like she's looking down at like her play mm. sheet or rather, and she's like, "Ah, oh, Amy, I noticed that you you like arts and crafts, and uh, I see uh, Joe over here hates arts and crafts. <laughs> 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 and he has a Pinterest. <laughs> that here. might not work. No, no. But there's you something. Get the idea. No, but if yeah. we if there's some way we could like plant a question or something in there where it's like okay. This is like our shoe in of like okay these, hopefully they 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 combine on this or yeah no I do like that you know, um, yeah because there's there's a definitely an aspect of it where like the comfortability and like getting rid of those nerves mm-hmm. it has a lot to do with like the first five minutes so we really gotta mm-hmm. really gotta hone in you know, and hopefully I don't screw it up I hope I actually I don't want to even be a part of it Yo, take me out be there yeah to where help are you film <laughs> grab the content oh. I'll be making TikToks in the background. <laughs> Dancing, yeah, probably. No, no, I'm no, you kidding. won't. You won't I'm catch kidding. me dancing, I'm dude. Kidding. Hell no, hell no. God, dancing's a challenge. <laughs> 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 That's an inside joke for the three of us. Our next question is uh, the challenge question. Oh, so this oh, yeah. is a time. This is this is actually how we grow our podcast from guest to guest. Um, is you know having the guests on our show challenge us to get someone else on the show. So who do you think we should have on the podcast? That's in. That's within your network or someone that you know. There are a few people that come to mind. We were talking about this prior, but Jean Taylor, mm-hmm. singer, I think she'd be so cool to talk to. She's actually like technically was my great grand big or whatever in at the U in a sorority that we were both in. But like I so I know her I know her well, but she is so interesting. And she's from Minnesota, but like you wouldn't know that her dad is like a, mu- a musician, excuse me, and he's a singer as well. And she's just got a cool background. She lives out in LA now and she comes back. 
um, sometimes, but I think she'd be really cool to talk to. Also, do you guys know Obi? He's a, I think he's the only person in Minnesota that has the name Obi, as far as I know. He is. He has no last name. Just he Obi. doesn't have a no. He it, Montague. Montague. I always say it wrong. That's why okay. I wasn't gonna say it. But there, I said it now. I'll I'll show you guys him after. But he's also a friend of mine. But he completely changed his life. Like he flipped it from. You know, he went to the U and he um he's from Minnesota and he's he's just really chill and he became this kind of like spokesperson he lives out in california as well now but he comes back quite a bit just for finding clarity and he li- and like um like sun is energy and like these different things that he's learned himself he's super interesting to hear speak okay. so Bo- on both fronts challenge accepted okay yeah. thank you mm-hmm. absolutely yes. i had a third one too oh you oh. want to hear it yes I, I challenge you to get somebody that someone that has been on one of joe rogan's podcasts on here that's a great, that's a great it's challenge. super super broad i'm gonna leave it broad i'm not gonna give you a category but there you go the fact that we have not done that yet is idiotic like we haven't seek to do that like found someone and then it's the degree it's the law of six or whatever you know you're separated from six people mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. uh there was a guy at the on just on joe rogan's podcast that's a professor and uh immunology disease expert yeah yeah and was talking about coronavirus like we haven't reached out to him. He's probably too big, but like from that's the U. From the U. You, you got to make that part. Oh yeah, Carlson, yeah, so right? Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Carlson School of Management. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's, probably, he's probably not studying for the Carlson School of Management. Are you sure? No, no way. He's in the medical. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. <laughs> but Ty hey. is in the Carlson School of Management. So. That's and uh, you know that's about it. And we're proud of you for that. (laughs) Good stuff. Thank God. But yeah, no, I think (laughs) you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Like we haven't, we haven't necessarily, because we want to have, we want to have it right. We want to have Joe Rogan see what we do. Oh sure. I know. That's what I was gonna say. Or like even whoever he's spoken to about space. He's got a bunch about space and aliens. Those are my favorite ones. I don't know why, Mm -hmm. because it's so abstract. To get somebody rolling on a space and aliens topic. I mean, seriously, that would be so interesting. I feel like that'd be fun. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they say stuff and you're like, what the hell? Sometimes you're like, oh, what the hell? That actually could be legit. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I don't know. No, I, I love agree. space. I get It's freaky, but I love it. What's your favorite part about space? Black holes. They're nuts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't like look at, like, I don't look into them. Like, I'm not like, I don't have a book by, by my bed about space or anything exciting like that. But like, when I hear about space, I like definitely listen in. Black holes are flat. Mm-hmm. What? You get, sh- you get, you like go in and then you're like warped and then you're somewhere else, like not in the black hole. Like what? That makes no sense. So there you go. Leave yeah, it at that. Mic it, drop. It is a time suck. Black holes. It's crazy. Light can't like what does that even there. mean? Like what? Yeah. It's crazy. It is insane. I know nothing. Yeah. I don't know enough. <laughs> I have nothing. That's all I have. I can, I can, <laughs> yeah. Ty, can you add anything to black holes? Yeah. Usually you're good at adding. Sometimes in. they combined and then. Uh, and then it's a bigger black hole. I don't know what okay. happens. Just okay. like then space like contracts but also expands. It's just so big. You ever just think about that? <laughs> <laughs> How big space is? <laughs> space is fucking massive. It's literally infinite. You can't comprehend that. Like it doesn't make any sense though, seriously. No, it doesn't. Like, like think about oh, do you throw like a ball out there? Where does it go? It just drops forever. What? It doesn't Bro- drop. Well it like, just floats. think about I know it doesn't, <laughs> but just think like if you just walk off of the top of Earth, theoretically you could just walk off the top and you just fall forever. Yeah. I, I can't. Yeah, you That's get freaky. into gravity and all that. I think the problem is we're all pretty smart, but we're just like not smart enough to understand space. So well, it's like we get ourselves into like thinking about it, but then we can't ever go beyond like right well, what's who's actually really happening. Yeah, I can't comprehend. Right, can't wrap my head around. But like it. you're smart enough to know how impressive it is. Right, but not smart enough to think beyond that. Yeah, but like the fact that we've gotten this far, like mm-hmm. we are we are e- evolved monkeys on one planet of one solar system yeah, dude. of one galaxy how small do you feel right of now millions of galaxies in the whole world and like we talk about uh you, the, the term light years comes up like a light year is how far light can travel in one year it's actually time it's not measured in time it's actually measured in distance a light year is a, is a unit of measurement and for distance and th- light years away are other galaxies that have like potentially other light forms and you know all kinds of different stuff we are so small for us to be able to like actually grasp where we are on that scale is very impressive 
Like we we built something. Mm. We built things to help us gather that information and we're able to comprehend it and say, okay, what else is there? And keep exploring. Exactly. God, crazy. it's just crazy. We're small. We're so small. We're just we're small. We're so irrelevant. Yeah, we are. That's what's so great is like anytime you, you get caught up in your day-to-day life, you can just remember that like we are so irrelevant in the grand scheme of things. That's actually a book I should rec- I would recommend to you. Homo sapiens. Homo sapiens. Yeah, that's a good little perspective book. Wow. Yeah. I'm going to do that. Highly recommend. Mm. I did take anthropology, human evolution. Didn't have a lot of space stuff, but I had a lot of evolution there. Yeah. I wouldn't take it again. I'm going to be honest. I oh. would not take it again. It wasn't as riveting as I thought it would be. Sure. There's a lot of, I, sa- I got kicked out of a lab. I'll tell you guys this real quick. Kicked out of a lab because it was like our lab number, what, 14 or something like that. And we were doing the exact same thing on these ape heads. But I said, when are we going to be done talking about monkeys and their apes? I got kicked Ooh. out. You got thrown out for that? I got thrown out for that. She's like, get out. I'm like, we've had enough of you. Struck a nerve. Struck a nerve. Yeah. That's ridiculous. I know. God bless. I know. You're a rebel. I I didn't realize I was until I say things out loud and then I'm like, dang it. Right. You've really shown us (laughs) on this (laughs) podcast. (laughs) I think we're going to gather one thing. (laughs) Is that it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, it started when she was uh, (laughs) in high school playing lacrosse and she had an extra ref added to the games because they needed to make sure that she wasn't Fallon girls. <laughs> it's true. Mm-hmm. Oh, I stuck a few in. knees out. I'm going to be honest. I stuck a few knees out. God, that's rebellious. I know. It's against I'm the horrible. rules. I know. That's that right. is against the rules. But all is fun and what's the saying again? Well, all is well, it ends well or something like that. Yeah. Well, I don't even know all what you're well. going All is fun. I don't know. There's all a lot is of fun. Were you going for all is fair and love and war? I think so. That doesn't work though. <laughs> no. God. All is fun and love and war. I was going to wrap that up into the final question, but blew that. Uh, but we have one final question for you, Sid. Mm-hmm. We good? Any other questions you'd like to oh, ask? I think we're... The last question is, what did you learn today from the moment that you woke up to more having this conversation? Oh, wow. Um, God, I, I mean, one thing I learned is, like, you're not alone in, like, putting yourself down. Like, Andrew, like, you alluded to, like, all those things where you're, like, you're, you get excited about new things and then you get confused about, like, what you're doing and, like, the career stuff. Like, we all, why do we always feel like the person next to us is doing better? Do you know what I mean? Like they're, they're not questioning what they're up to. They're not questioning their career path. Like I, why am I not like that guy? You know what I mean? Like the, was, I'm alluding to a lot of like career stuff right now, but like we're all just trying to figure it the hell out. Like, and we're all our own basically biggest challenger. So I'm like, I'm not alone in that. And I think especially with quarantine, I keep bringing it up, but we're getting in our head and I'm like, Oh my God, I'm the only person that has these struggles. Like, no, no way. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's that's my main piece of learnings today i feel like phenomenal that's beautiful thank Mm -hmm. you that's very well said thank you i agree with that on all fronts i think that is one hell of a way to cap off a phenomenal 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 podcast that's a wrap good work that's a wrap clap it up we did it guys we freaking grand slammed this one thank you we're out cutting that (laughs) grand slam this one grand slam